Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex or Nuznas here. You guys have seen me make videos on underrated items in RuneScape. You've seen me make videos on the most powerful items in RuneScape, but something that I've never done is make a video on niche items or unlocks that are very, very good in RuneScape. So in this video, I'm going to bring you some items and unlocks that are, well, niche, which means they only are useful in a few specific areas of the game. But although you aren't going to be bringing these items or unlocks everywhere, the few places that you are using using these, they are very, very powerful for their specific use. Now, if you want to progress your account and get better at PVM, make sure you subscribe as over 70% of you aren't subscribed. So make sure you check because I recently thought I was subscribed to a YouTuber forever and well, it turns out I actually wasn't. So, all right, let's get started with some of these that I hope will really help you guys out. And the first thing I want to talk about is the Salve Amulet E, which is the imbued version of the normal Salve Amulet. And this increases your damage and accuracy for for all combat styles while well, you attack undead monsters. Uh, you can get this from doing the Haunted Mind quest and then you imbue it by doing Tarn's Lair. Now if you're somebody who knows me and you know this channel, you know I love killing revenants and this amulet is amazing for killing revenants which is probably where I have used this the most. If you plan to go for the Chaos title or the Slayer collection logs and Camp Revenants for possibly that Stadius Warhammer drop, this is a must have for anyone. It also has a few more uses, it's nice to bring along to the Shadow Reef, as some of the zombies in there you can use this on, and most notably, it also works on Terraket the Necromancer, the second boss in the Shadow Reef. If you're, so if you're someone looking to grind out a lot of Shadow Reef, this is also a very good item to be aware of. Now next I also wanted to talk about a use with the Grace of the Elves. Now most of you do know what the Grace of the Elves is. It is a amulet that is used primarily for skilling where it can bank items for you. You charge it with Signs of the Porter and it banks items. Another use for this that is very very useful for actually getting around the game and most notably doing clue scrolls is that you can actually right click it and teleport to some of the portals outside of the Max Guild. So outside of the Max Guild there's those portals that you can attune to different places. You can attune them to the Invention Guild. You can attune them uh, to all kinds of different places, Living Rock Caverns. But the most notable place is you can tune them to a Fairy Ring. So this means you can basically right click on your Grace of the Elves, teleport straight to a Fairy Ring, and then go wherever you want from that Fairy Ring. Now I know there are portable Fairy Rings that you can use from your inventory, but for those, you actually have to get the Invention Materials to make them. And some of those take quite a while to get. So so if you don't have those materials, this is something that I use when doing clue scrolls and generally just getting around the game because uh, when you're doing clues, you have to use a lot of fairy rings. So uh, be aware that the Grace of the Elves is super useful for this. You can also tune it to some other places. Like I had it in tune to an invention guild, so I can just right click teleport to invention guild whenever I need. You can attune it to uh, some very, very useful places. There's a clue step um, that if you attune this to Jade Idol, you can actually teleport basically right to the clue step so it just has a few nice uses for for getting around for doing clues which is why I thought it was useful to mention here. So in RuneScape, there aren't too many skilling methods that can rival PVM in terms of money making. RuneScape is a very PVM based game, very PVM based money making game. So there are a few and one of those is runecrafting, especially runecrafting water runes. And so there is a quest called the Hero's Welcome quest, which you'll see the requirements for on the screen. And basically when you do this quest, one of the rewards that you get is actually the ability to produce five. 5% more runes when runecrafting, which for something like runecrafting water runes can be a lot more money per hour. When you're crafting water runes, you're crafting like 140,000 water runes per hour. So an extra 5% actually adds up quite a bit for an extra 7,000 water runes per hour. And this is just a quest that you can do pretty quickly that you can get this. And essentially it's going to add some profit for when you're rune crafting and definitely something you should you should get. Now we just talked about one thing for rune crafting and here's another very specific rune crafting thing and that is a player owned farm perk. So if you have level 98 
create farming, you can actually put an arcane a pterosaur. I probably said that totally wrong. But you can put that in your large pen. And if you have the perk for it uh, after it's elder, um, you put a farm totem down and you get this perk. If you have two of these, it will increase your runes per essence multiplier by two while crafting elemental runes, which does count water runes, which is probably the most profitable way to make money with rune crafting. Uh, so of course, if you have one, the tier one effect, it's only a multiplier by one. Tier two is by two. So you're going to make a lot more money while making water runes if you combine this and what we talked about with the hero's welcome quest. So another one that really is only good if you're basically rune crafting water runes. Um, but if you are doing that, this is very, very strong and something you need to have as well. Now this next item is a very very powerful if you're somebody who is trying to unlock Zami solos or if you're running the Zamrock Elite Dungeon. I know most people now uh, just do Zami as a boss but some people do the Elite Dungeons to get the slivers and some people also still need to do 25 runs of the Elite Dungeon to unlock Zamrock and if you need to do any of those things and you happen to be ranging this is extremely good and helped me a ton uh, when I was doing the dungeon so these are Joss Demon Bane arrows and essentially what these arrows do is when you're fighting demons all attacks deal plus 30% damage and plus 20% hit chance um, so these are extremely powerful and you're gonna hit so hard against demons uh, but with these arrows it's gonna make it a lot smoother to to actually kill these and it's something that helped me a ton like I said and I highly recommend using these or looking into these um, although they're a bit pricey uh, they will help you run the dungeon a whole lot faster. So the next items I want to talk about are really only useful at one, maybe two places in RuneScape, but they're very good where they work and can really make this area a lot easier, and that's Obsidian Armor, most notably the Obsidian Ranger and Mage Helmet which can be crafted easily after obtaining obsidian bars from the fight cauldron minigame which you first need to obtain obsidian shards then you have to turn them into bars and then into this armor now this armor is great because for instance the obsidian helmet offers a nine percent damage reduction from zuck and other mobs and then on top of that you'll get a 10 percent accuracy boost for most of the tazar creatures in the zuck waves but this accuracy bonus does not apply to zuck this armor is very good for first timers trying to learn Zuck either on normal mode or hard mode and if you really are struggling you can use the entire armor set for up to a 55% damage reduction when doing Zuck which is really good if it's your first time or you're trying to learn and feel out the waves it can really help you to survive. Of course this is probably the only place you'll use this armor which is why it makes sense to be on this list. I wanted to also add on to this the Takozo ring. This ring if you're doing Zuck is also great because you get a 10% damage increase against Tazar creatures as well. So when doing the waves up to Zuck, this ring paired with the Obsidian Helmet is very strong. However, again, this ring does not give its buffs for Zuck himself. You can get this ring very easily by completing the Elder Kiln quest. And when I first did Zuck when I was starting out on release, I struggled a ton with food and just having enough supplies and this Obsidian really helped me as well as the Taco Zo. So if you're doing Zuck, make sure that you use these if you're going for your first time. And then once you're more comfortable, uh, you can kind of switch out to you know other things although the range helmet and mage helmet are best in slot no matter what but then once you know you start getting good at Zek you're not going to want to use the obsidian armor as much you'll want to use either crit bloom or power armor depending on your style. So a few fun ones at the end here I kind of want to talk about. The first one is a very simple one and it literally has one use and that is the heated tea flask. You can buy this flask and basically just drink tea out of it whenever you want and the real only use for this is essentially getting rid of the aggression potion buff. So picture this, it's you, you've been doing some sort of slayer creature and you have an aggression potion active, you teleport back to, you know, a bank somewhere or you're running to a bank and you get piled by a bunch of mobs because whoops you still have your aggression potion active well with the heated tea flask you can drink it and it gets rid of this effect so essentially uh this is its only use but it was a kind of a funny interesting one i thought i'd mention here at the end and one that is actually pretty underrated i feel but is only useful at one place is a reward from the elite fremnic diaries 
Now the Elite Fremnik Diaries actually require quite a bit of stats and quests so I'll flash that up on screen so you can see now what it requires but doing these diaries you actually unlock some things for the Dagonoth Kings so the only place this is useful of course is one boss the Dagonoth Kings but nowadays with the new rings like the Reavers Ring and the Stalkers Ring uh, a lot of the Dagonoth King rings are actually quite expensive and they're actually a very good money maker nowadays way better than you'd think and the Fremnik Sea Boots 4 will make it so Dagonoth Kings will drop you noted bones. So all the bones you get from Dagonoth Kings will be instantly noted. Don't need magic note paper. Won't need to go ahead and note them yourselves and spend the time clicking for everything. They'll just be all noted on the floor. Most people actually know of this perk, but one that people tend to forget is the Fremnik Sea Boots 4 and the Elite Diaries also make it so you deal 10% more damage to the Dagonoth Kings with auto attacks and 5% more damage with abilities. This was added as recently as 2020 so it's something that you might not have known about but it does make DKs a bit faster so if you're somebody that's planning on camping DKs or, or going there uh, this might not have use anywhere else but it's very very good for DKs so yeah I hope this video helped you guys out gave you some items you might not have thought about before uh, that can be useful at some different places I have a ton of awesome videos coming this month that I'm super proud of so make sure you hit that subscribe button to get all those right when they come out and like the videos it really helps get this out to more people and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.